there, Bruins. It's Anna back to analyze another editing style. This week, I want to talk about B-roll. What is B-roll? How can you use it? What is its purpose? And how can it make your videos better? To talk about this, we're going to look at a recent video by Team Liquid, which is an esports gaming organization. Admittedly, their production value is a little higher and it's a little more polished and professional than the average YouTuber. But of course, I think looking at professional videos is a good way to learn as well. So let's start with what is B-roll? B-roll is basically secondary footage that isn't the main track of the video. This is often used to contextualize stories in the news and provide background to a documentary, just to name a few examples. B-roll is typically used silently, so there's no need to pay attention to the sound when filming B-roll. A basic use for B-roll is when someone is talking and the shot is of them talking talking, and then you cut to something else to show what they're talking about and contextualize it for the viewer. For example, maybe I'm making a vlog and I'm talking about how it snowed today, so then I could cut to some b-roll footage of the snow. It contextualizes it and makes it much more engaging for the viewer than if I just talked about the snow and didn't show it. So now let's take a look at our video for today, and it's called Thank You Twist, and it looks back on the time that Twist spent as a CSGO player for Team Liquid. Since he's leaving the team, they shot an interview with him and relive some of the memories from the years that he spent on the team. I'm kind of going backwards chronologically so I'm going to start with a clip from the end of the video. And I think we've achieved everything there is to achieve together. Unfortunately, we really do feel that this roster needs a change. So this first clip was from the co-CEO of Team Liquid, who's explaining why they're sending him away. So at one point he says, I think we've achieved everything there is to achieve. And then it cuts to some B-roll of them winning at various championships, such as there was... ESL Pro League and ESL Cologne and I Am Chicago. There's a lot of reasons this footage is well placed. First, it adds meaning to what he said and shows specifically what he's talking about even though he didn't name it. And also, to the target audience of this video, who are probably fans of the CSGO team, it triggers some memories and helps them relive the feelings of when the team won some tournaments. So there's one cool use of B-roll, adding more meaning than there is in the actual script of the video. Now let's look at example number two. This clip has some footage of the CSGO game in it, and although I'm pretty adjusted to it, I know it can be a little shocking if you see it for the first time. There's some like, gun noises and it's a little violent, so just be warned. I think every time he went in the server, he knew he was just gonna rip people's heads off, and we all trusted him to rip people's heads off, and uh, he did. Okay, there we go. Twist. Ooh, twist again with the CZ. Oh, oh my God, we've seen it before. And twist in the corner, there should be no way out. My God, how has he done it? Picking up a quick triple, and he's gonna win the round. Absolutely oh, no. godlike. So I don't have that much to say about this clip, but it's basically doing what I already said. It adds context and makes the video more engaging to relive some great plays rather than just listening to people talk. And that's just a core function of B-roll, making the video less boring. If you're just watching someone talk, you can lose attention quickly. But say you're listening to someone talk and it's kind of boring, but you're also looking at something that's kind of interesting, you're less likely to lose attention. And notice on how there's really no rules on how to add B-roll in. You can just do simple, straight cuts with no transitions. You can do it kind of at any timing when the person's talking and it still seems smooth and we absorb it cleanly. So it's not difficult at all to add B-roll in and still end up with a professional clean video. All right, now let's look at a more specific use of B-roll in the last clip. Back then for me, joining Team Liquid was actually my dream back then. That was the only any team I wanted to join. When I finally had the opportunity to and I, I was able to get out of Misfits and move on to bigger things, it was a, a great feeling. I instantly improved as a player just off of confidence when I joined the code. So one last superpower that B-roll has is to cover up the rough edges. For example, if your main film is not all watchable, you can cover it with some B-roll. But the specific technique that was used in this clip was covering the cuts. If you rewind it and play it again and specifically listen to the audio track of him talking, you can hear that the places where it was cut are all covered over by B-roll. Of course, you can have footage where you, you're talking and then you cut and then you talk some more, which is what I'm doing right now. But if you go back and forth between the main film and the B-roll, or even two different camera shots in a multi-camera setup, it covers up the cuts cleanly. I think that's definitely a technique I wanna try out in my videos to make it more smooth. All right, so that was today's kind of documentary flashback kind of editing style. Hopefully you know a little more about B-roll now and keep looking at the videos around you to learn new things. As always, I'm taking suggestions for videos you want to see me cover in this series. I've got four episodes left and I'm struggling every week to figure out what video to analyze. So I would love your suggestions. But until next week, happy editing.